I'm Brian Williams and I'm Assistant Director of Built Heritage in the Department of Environment and today we're at the village of Bilahi in the valley of the River Ban. It's the principal river in the north of Ireland and was always a focus for human settlement through thousands of years. In fact, people have been living near Bilahi for around about 10,000 years and walk along through the fields here near the river you'll find flint implements dating from all those millennia ago. Now People have lived here continuously. They've gone through farming times. There's been the Bronze Age, the Iron Age. In fact, on this very hill where the house is built, there's been a fortified dwelling here for at least a thousand years, perhaps 1,500 years. And it lies as an archaeological site underneath us. It can't be seen at present, but it's still here. When you're coming through this part of County Derry, as you come around the corner into the village, your eye is caught by a wonderful historic building in tremendous condition. All that is here can't be seen, actually, and we have done archaeological excavations in the past, and so we know that there was a defended farmstead here within a circular enclosure. I don't know exactly the date it started, but let's say 800 AD would be a fair estimate. Within that, you would have had roundhouses, and it would have been a defended settlement, probably a fairly violent society at that time, and pro you know farmsteads would have been prone to attack. But the principal site that you see at Balaki Bon was laid out in the early years of the 17th century, and it was all done in a very planned and thought out way and so the whole layout of the bomb its houses and the village was all arranged in advance it's mapped we still have the maps done by Nicholas Pinner who was a famous cartographer at the time and the bond is built on a little hill and as you can see looking out the out of the window here it looks right down the street of this planned village nothing would have happened in that village but the landowner would have known about it and the houses and the garden plots are still there as they're shown on the map of 1620 and the, the first thing that would have been built would be the bond itself the bond being the fortified yard it's a square fort essentially with corner towers and then within that would have been the principal residence which is still here and we are in it today but it has evolved over time it had it became a military barracks it became a nice country house in the 18th century it became a doctor's home and so there was a surgery in this house and people came in and operations happened here there's also over to one side of the barn another residence that was built in the 18th century and has been lived in continuously and the Craig family still live in the house and in a way they are guardians of the whole of Bilahi Bon. They live here, their forefathers did and they intend that their family should carry on living here. And there is this tremendous sense of continuity at Bilahi. This building was put up 1620 and we're in it today. There have been people here every day ever since it was first built. It's a living monument. In Bilaki Bon, we are so fortunate. We have this fantastic collection. Local poet Seamus Heaney, who is the Nobel Laureate for Literature 1995, comes from this district and he has very generously and kindly donated his manuscript and some of his audio collection to the community and it stays here in our Bilaki Bon. And for anyone who's read the poems of Heaney, this is surely a pilgrimage site. You must come and see his manuscripts lying around. Not only that, his duffel coat from going to school and his little leather school bag just sitting there as if he had just tossed them aside a day ago. Here's a poem in front of me about the very school bag I, I mentioned. And the wording is there. They're scribbling out, redrafting. Then he gets it onto a typewritten version. And you can see it's again all annotated and redrafted. It's been to another Ulster poet, John Hewitt, for comment and back again. You can see a, a poem in construction. You know, not just the final printed page in a book that looks so chic and, and final. This is very much the building of a poem. Heaney's poems are absolutely universal. When you read them, they can appeal to anyone. For example, his Beowulf poems, which are fantastic. I remember playing them in the car to my son when he was seven years old, and it had to be played and played again. And the seven-year-old boy just wanting to hear this so many times. I think that's a real tribute to a poet, if he can do that to a child. See one that's really appropriate for an archaeologist, which I am, and it's called Digging. And it links us very much to a sculpture which is just set outside the bond, which shows the man built of peat cuttings. 
And this poem, he describes his father digging for potatoes, digging for turf, digging in the vegetable garden. And it's very much, I think, a centred poem about life here in Balachi for generation after generation after generation, digging and digging as a way of life, a routine. But suddenly Heaney breaks that and instead in his hand he has a pen and starts to talk about it and there's a whole move to modernity away from just making your life out of the soil into understanding and taking it that bit further and I think that's what we have here we're really understanding life in this district but also at an international level life and humanity is all in these poems the whole essence of this room is that you have right through from the very scrappiest draft manuscript scribbled on the back of an envelope through the working drafts right up to beautiful limited editions illustrated by Irish artists like the late Cecil King published in Germany for an international audience. There's that whole process that's here in the room and you know you can come and see it and see the whole process of the poet at work. I think it's for everybody. You know, you may not have heard of Heaney till today, but take it from me, he's worth investigating. If you have heard it, it's all here. This is his archive. Come and relish in it. I think any visitor to the Bonn will get caught up in a moment in time 400 years ago and see how life would have been. There is a feeling in the building of real time depth. And come in and see the exhibitions. Just feel the whole presence in the house. And I should say to any visitor, if you're coming late in the evening, just be cautious because there is actually, this isn't a spoof, there is actually a ghost in the round tower at one end. And the staff here are always very careful to get the lights out early and get, get that door closed before evening and winter. They are convinced it is a very genuine presence. Balachi Bon is open in the summertime from Easter until the end of September, from Wednesday through to Sunday, every day, 10 to 5. In the winter time, which runs from October through to Easter, it's the two days, Wednesday and Sunday, from 10 to 4, and on a Sunday, it's 12 to 4. But what I would advise anybody coming here to do is to phone ahead 028 79 386 812.